Hi everyone, welcome to Camille's Holistic Health Show. I'm Dr. Cam and today we're going to talk about diabetes myelitis being the global epidemic that it is. And really it is a global epidemic because during our communities it is just showing how it can really affect different people of all walks of life from the young to the elderly to different races, to different sexes, male or female. It really doesn't matter. It hits anyone. And you may have somebody in your family. If you don't have diabetes, you may have someone in your family that has it. So if this is a video of interest to you, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that bell so you can get notified every time I have a new video coming out. So today we're going to talk about diabetes myelitis. It is also simply known as diabetes. It is a disease that's actually characterized by malfunctioning metabolism and a high blood sugar level. The results can be low levels of insulin or an abnormal insulin resistance. And the mixed with inadequate levels of insulin secretion results in diabetes. So symptoms include increase in urine production, excessive thirst, weight loss, and extreme fatigue. And diabetes can either be type 1, type 2, or gestational diabetes. That's when you get pregnant. And each type has a different cause and different severity of symptoms. But all forms of diabetes are dangerous if not treated or managed correctly. So proper management um, can, you know, people can actually live very long, healthy, normal lives. So diabetes type 1 is often seen in young and in children uh, or young adults and it's very common to see that they take insulin daily um, if you have an autoimmune and disease and it's diabetes type 1 that's very common you may be taking insulin daily the fact without careful management and treatment Complications of diabetes can lead to, you know, um, infections of your limbs and it possibly can lose them, blindness uh, and coma, um, diabetic coma, which can actually be very fatal. So we're going to talk about diabetes type 2 and the link between Alzheimer's disease Studies have shown that research believes that Alzheimer's could be some sort of form of diabetes uh, because findings show that insulin production in brain in the brain decreases as Alzheimer's advances. So this is really, really interesting because researchers discovered that the brain produces insulin, of course, and that this substance produced by the brain of patients with Alzheimer's it, uh, tend to fall below the normal level. So that's, again, really interesting. Insulin disappears early and dramatically in Alzheimer's disease. And many of the unexplained features of Alzheimer's, such as cell death and tangles in the brain, appear to be linked to abnormalities in insulin signaling. So this actually demonstrates that the disease is most likely a neuroendocrine disorder or an other, another type of diabetes. Very, very interesting. They believe that Alzheimer's might be the new form of diabetes since the evidence shows that insulin levels continue to drop progressively as Alzheimer's um, severity increases. So also they've found that low levels of acetylcholine 
are directly linked to a loss of insulin and insulin-like growth factors functioning in the brain. So acetylcholine basically is a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. So this is really interesting new forms of research that's coming out that compound it with other problems that you may have um, because organ, you know, once you are affected with diabetes, it does definitely affect many organs, including the brain, as they have now found out through research. So diabetes and obesity, we know there is a link between that, but there's also a cause of depression. It can cause depression. Many people suffer with depression at some point in their lives when you are having uh, to deal with diabetes and managing it. And it's not about blaming yourself about that. It's important to just adjust to a new lifestyle and feeling down guilty, that's okay. But it's important that if you continue down that path, it's important to seek professional help. And it's also normal to feel, you know, that like you can't control your diabetes. And it is definitely some, something that a lot of people are having to adjust to, especially if you're new to diabetes and your journey to improving your health and you just it's important to feel more in control of your life again that's basically it take charge you know try to lose the weight improve your blood glucose level simple as that I know it's important to eat eat healthy and it's also important to stay on that regimen because it's it's it could be strict, but it's important to make it a hobby instead of a boring, um, mundane, in and out, every day I have to do this, I have to do this, and make it uh, an interesting um, form of, uh, of a healthy lifestyle because that's what you're turning it into. That's what we should all turn it into, a healthy lifestyle that has actually enjoy, that has a lot of enjoyment for you. So the signs of depression, if you are having it around diabetes, is that you're unable to sleep, you have a lack of energy, um, the things that you used to enjoy, you no longer enjoy, and you might be eating too much or you might be eating too little. So those are signs, if they are something that you are, uh, you believe that you do have some form sign of, di of depression, then it's important to, again, seek help for these symptoms, um, especially if they're mentally and physically affecting you. So, um, we're going to go into some of the wonderful foods that can actually help benefit those with diabetes. And we just remember that for centuries, more than 400 plants have been identified to help manage diabetes. 400. Plants are definitely the drug of choice when it comes to managing diabetes, okay? So there are a large number of scientific research out there, findings that confirm the uh, effectiveness of plant foods in managing diabetes. So things to consider, uh, to eat more plant food, because if it's something that you don't really crave, Trust me, I never really craved plant-based foods. Even though I don't have diabetes, my dad did suffer with diabetes. And he, for many years, lived very, very healthy, uh, eating a lot of plant-based foods, though he did eat meat as well. But it, you know, you tend to, as you go along, you tend to crave it more. It's really interesting. So... Uh, a very common um, 
way to manage it is eating lots of raw onions and garlic and because it, it's really an anti-diabetic kind of drug that is a uh, food that is basically like an anti-diabetic drug that is been used all over the world especially in Europe Asia and the Middle East so definitely to consider to eat a little more of that and common mushrooms have also been used a lot in Europe to help manage diabetes along with everything else you might be doing for it and bear, uh, barley bread wow it's very known in the Middle East to help um, with management of your diabetes as well. So there are some other foods that you can combine for a healthy lifestyle, including beans, cabbage, cinnamon, we know that as a spice, really good for uh, those with diabetes, coriander seeds, cucumber, and fungi Greek. And you know, these are really has a lot of anti-diabetic properties in it and research has shown and confirmed that these foods and their compounds are either help uh, manage your levels but can also help stimulate the insulin production in the pancreas okay so an ant uh, anachoke artichoke excuse me is a tuber root uh, with a top uh, like sunflower type uh, top and it definitely contains potassium, calcium, iron and sulfur that can actually help maintain good health. So a wonderful um, you know artichoke actually contains at least 2% of insulin. Who would have known? So it's very good. You can use it in salads and it can be boiled and it can also be combined with other vegetables. So definitely a food of choice to consider if you have diabetes. Now let's get into some of the herbs that can actually be a benefit to you. So Bitter melon, um, if you haven't heard about it, it is a medicinal fruit and a lot of practitioners in traditional uh, Chinese medicine and Indian uh, medicine use bitter melon for centuries and it is definitely has high qualities of medicinal uh, use. And there's evidence that shows that it can actually benefit those with diabetes. So definitely something to consider. It could be used in capsule form, powder, seeds, and it can be blended with vegetable as a vegetable pulp. So we're going to go into fenugreek. And as I've mentioned before, it is a seed that actually contains chemicals that help slow down the digestion of carbohydrates and sugar. So it really is beneficial for those that have problems with diabetes. Now there was a publishing about three years ago that just showed that those who are pre-diabetic were less likely to receive a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes when taking it as a powder, fenugreek seeds. So it may definitely increase the levels of insulin and lowering the production of blood glucose in the body. Okay, so we're going to go now to milk thistle. It is high in anti inflammatory properties and it's been used since ancient times, many different ailments, especially as a tonic for the liver. And what it's great is that it has a lot of antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties. And so it can actually benefit those with diabetes as well. It has, comes in liquid and a capsule form and powder extract. So we're going to go now to gymnema. Gymnema. That's how it's pronounced. Gymnema. 
and it's uh, definitely for type 1 and type 2 diabetes and it definitely shows improvement for diabetes type 2 because it responds very well if taken as a leaf and its extract so just remember gymnema it's pronounced and it's g y m n e m a okay and then lastly ginger who would have known this is some evidence showing that it can actually help or it may lower blood sugar levels and ginger is another herb that people have used for thousands of years in traditional medicine to help manage diabetes and you know these are wonderful herbs straight from nature that can actually help you while you're doing other things with your physician and stuff this can actually be something that you can use to combine with your foods just make sure that you speak to your physician whoever you um, whether you have a traditional uh, conventional doctor or a naturopath and help them uh, understand that you want to change your lifestyle and combine different herbs and different types of foods to improve your health so you know ginger can be brewed into a tea or it can be used as a capsule there is also liquid form too if you can drink um, down ginger it's a little strong but you can use it that way too and you can actually use the liquid tincture or the liquid form that comes in a bottle and Gaia sells them as a ginger rail so you can put that in some water and add some bubbly uh, types of carbonated non-sugary water with uh, lemon based tastes or watermelon and you can make your own ginger ale uh, drink and drink that through the day so definitely some herbs to and foods to consider um, just make sure that you have a professional that knows a lot about uh, foods nutrition and herbal medicine to help you get on a healthy life style uh, for your diabetes okay so herbs um, may help manage blood sugar weight loss and you know adverse effects of your diabetes so you know work with your doctor um, learn as much as you can um, about all the different ways to you know monitor your blood glucose levels in many different ways and within and make sure it's within healthy ranges always and you know functional medicine is at the forefront today and if you don't really know about functional medicine then this is something that you should um, consider this is something that uh, if you are wanting to change your life around your diabetes then this is an excellent way to go you know my mission as a naturopath um, from going in medicine I have my MD degree I went into natural medicine and I'm a naturopath my mission is really to bring awareness to really what's going on to the root cause of your health issue the first thing I did with my health problems um, I had thyroid issues was really to understand and acknowledge my state of health that's number one and it is my desire uh, for you to overcome them and get grounded listen to your mind your soul and walk with conviction uh, onto a better path for your health and wellness journey I really would love 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 to invite you to a five-day um, 
challenge that I'm having for women, women boldly rising. It's really for professional women, busy entrepreneurs, um, on the go type women that really want to get in enlightened and understand and how to overcome your struggles in health so you can improve your life and you may have autoimmune conditions you may have another chronic condition or just a health problem you could have fibromyalgia um, you can have you know an autoimmune problem high blood pressure insomnia problems sleeping uh, chronic fatigue so Basically, any woman that wants to take their health to the next level and you really are looking for that support and um, having that engagement in an amazing uh, support group and that will give you guidance and direction, especially if you're looking to overcome it with a more alternative approach to health and wellness okay and you're looking for better options rather than compounding it with anything that will actually suppress your symptoms make your symptoms worse and or have adverse effects so and getting to the root cause of your health problems is so so important if these things resonate with you these words then I would like to uh, invite you to my five-day challenge woman boldly rising on April 30th um, the links are below in the uh, comment box um, below so if you would love to to join Come have some uh, engagement, learn about alternative medicine, and get on a healthier path for yourself so you can turn your entire life around. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, subscribe to my YouTube channel and definitely hit that bell so you can get you notified every time I have a new video coming out because I have quite a lot that I have coming up for this year and beyond. So thanks so much for listening and I will talk to you next time in the next video. Bye now.